Professor will open with uh, your main GUI. Uh, that's we are calling main window. So this is our main interface. Uh, we have uh, implemented a real-time phase detection and recognition uh, using MATLAB. So as soon as you start the camera, your faces will be started capturing and uh, as the single image and then uh, we'll be using Voila Jones algorithm to detect the face the detected face should come and appear over here uh, in the second uh, picture box that is the axis now we have two options here training and testing so soon as you say capture face the main camera the live streaming will stop and after live stream is stopped you could just mention a class and you could uh, uh, you know press train button so this captured face will be stored in the database you can just click on uh, display database option to view all the faces that have been registered and then uh, when you say test it's going to test this capture face against all the face faces in the database and is going to finally recognize your face now uh, this can be uh, performed even with uh, database images so you can match one database image with uh, other database images in the uh, uh, file or uh, vice versa so let's see how it works so when uh, we say start camera just right click on any function say view callback uh, we'll be taking a video input here first of all it's a YUV 640 by 480 type so it's a color video basically uh, so we'll be using the trigger to get one frame uh, extracted and per uh, I mean the frame extracted per trigger will be one and we intend to uh, keep on running this infinitely we'll be starting this video this uh, gets a handle of your video your video is nothing but your webcam over here and we'll be initializing an object of face detector which is vision.casket object detector that is Fallagen's method here we have used a continuous while loop so that it <coughs> you know keeps on rotating will be triggering a video as you can remember that uh, you know we are extracting one frame per trigger uh, we'll be getting the data uh, from video this data is nothing but one single frame which will be of course displaying in the first axis uh, so this time will be displayed in the first axis now this will be ideally an image which uh, will have a face and lot of surroundings now the first objective of ours is to remove all the surroundings and uh, you know, extract the face part so how we are going to do so we are going to you know use a step function uh, step function is nothing but a MATLAB function where a particular algorithm can be applied on a particular data so our data is nothing but video frame so face detector will be applied on video frame we'll be getting BB BB uh, is essentially a rectangle that will be uh, you know returning the coordinates of your detected face and we are going to call separate function we are going to pass the data which is nothing but the entire frame and BB the separate function cuts the image based on this locations BB and returns two images I am on the main image and I am to the segmented image the segmented image will be displayed on uh, the second uh, picture box and this process will be keep on continuing now once you say once you say capture face So once you say uh, capture face this video is going to be stopped and we'll have an image which you have captured in the third handle uh, I mean third axis so this is your third axis where the image will appear now from here on either you have training or testing so whenever you are clicking on train go for callback now what we are going to do is we are using a LPP based technique for feature extraction over here so we are going to first load the database now suppose 
there were no database in existence so this suppose this is the first instance under this situation this try command over here i mean this try part over here is not going to get executed so for the first time it's going to come over here so because you do not have anything existent we'll say dbs which is nothing but the feature vectors is null there is no classes and we are going to extract the feature from the image current image we are going to put this into database and in classes whatever class name you have specified through your edit box that will be stored and i'm going to write this image into uh, uh, i mean image into my training directory and i'm going to save this so first image is going to be saved second time onwards it will be loading the earlier part so you can remember now we have only one image extract the feature from current image you know put it in the next row of dbs so the second image will come in the second row third image will come in the third row etc now whatever class name you have uh, given so say suppose you have given class name 1 and earlier you had stored the class name 1 so this is nothing but this second image or second instance of first class so what you got to do is you just got to store this file name with the instance id so if is nothing but number of uh, instances of this class we are already having and we incremented by one and that's how the file name should appear so when you store the third image of the first class so suppose you have already trained two instances of first person again you give class name as one so your instance value should be three so if two uh, i mean two classes will be matched to the current class name then it will be incremented by one that will be three convert it into string and put it with class name so your data will be stored with 1 underscore 3 dot png now uh, this is about how uh, you've done your training now when you go for testing just right click open uh, if you have you know uh, not already had uh, uh, stopped it, it it will automatically stop this video extract the face which is in access 3 that is nothing but face i load your database load all the png images <coughs> read every image from your database you know uh, instead of doing this you can directly load dbs and from dbs you can perform this uh, however uh, you know i am doing uh, image resizing over here so load every image from the database resize them to a standard size of 128 by 128 and then uh, you know call lbp underscore server function which is a lbp function to extract the lbp features now i'll get back to lbp uh, features later on so resize the current image get the test feature now take the difference of test feature with respect to every training feature so see here if is nothing but the training features now find whichever is the minimum so we are trying to find the minimum over here there is a minimum distance algorithm first assume this code to be infinity and then keep on updating it so at the end of this match will contain the image with which it had matched correctly and you can remember classes is a variable which is storing the number of classes so if you had two instances of first person and three inst instances of second person this class matrix will be stored uh, 1 1 2 2 2 so suppose your fourth image had been matched so if you say classes of match now fourth instance is nothing but two so detected value will be two and that's what it's going to uh, represent two now coming back to uh, lbp features we'll uh, open with lbp features this is basically a feature which will um, you know give us a uh, local binary histogram of uh, circular pattern so uh, if we have given only one image it's going to generate the points minus 1 minus 1 minus 1 0 so you can just uh, build this neighborhood 1 minus 1 minus 1 minus 1 0 minus 1 so this is going to be a complete neighborhood which will be put 
block by block over the entire image and its uh, histogram is going to be calculated now because this histogram is nothing but a polar histogram uh, or uh, i mean polar local binary pattern see what local binary pattern is you got to take one uh, pixel got to select its entire neighborhood and going to check each point if it is greater than the center pixel or not if it is greater than the center pixel then you uh, put uh, one for that point and otherwise zero and then ultimately all these points are combined together to give you uh, you know a binary form which you then convert to decimal to get a number so uh, you know we'll uh, take this radius and neighborhood points and from each neighbors we are going to convert it into a polar form uh, using 2 pi divided by neighbors theory we are going to extract every point in x direction y direction and so we already have the neighbors in s points find out the minimum of y maximum of y minimum of x maximum of x this is nothing but the i mean this will give you the block size max minus mean uh, max minus mean in x direction and uh, along with this box direction uh, cut the image so for every block you'll be getting a small cut images uh, get the binary histogram by 2 to the power neighbors theory and then uh, take the result so when you say neighbors neighbors is nothing but a combination of ones and zeros so the, this i mean total number of ones that you are extracting from the neighbor so this is your bin so put this bins into result so likewise for the entire image you extract this binary values and then uh, use the uh, interpolation pixel values this is how the local binary pattern basically works in the polar mode however you can also go for uh, binary pattern in the rectangular mode where you do not have to define any pixel values you can simply you know scan uh, one pixel and take its neighborhood and then form the binary pattern so yeah uh, this is going to be giving you the histogram of lbp row by row that's going to be extracted now let us see how this uh, whole thing works so uh, just start the camera once you started the camera you start extracting your face so your face will appear here capture your face so that uh, comes here now if i don't give any face class and just say test uh, if there was anything in the database uh, it would have given so there's nothing in the database so just keep it's a first class so train this one and again i'll be starting the camera I'm capturing the face, and uh, let me remove this one and say taste. So this image was matched uh, with this particular image. So this is how uh, it entirely works.